The Neolithic Revolution in North Africa was a very complex scenario which involved the movement of different cultural ideas and as well as the movement of different groups and people. And in this video we're going to be talking about this time period and revolution, this historical event. To be exact, the Neolithic Revolution was the transition from hunter-gathering lifestyles into farming and herding practices that appeared in the Middle East around 13,000 years ago and gradually spread throughout the world and, of course, in for the case of this video, North Africa. And so I'm gonna tell you about the different types of ways that this would have spread. And so there are two models whenever we're talking about this. And first one we're gonna talk about is demic diffusion. Now demic diffusion is when we have the movement of different people who come through with these new living lifestyles such as agriculture or herding. And they, they come in and they add mixed with the older hunter-gathering populations. A quick example of this would be, we have location A, in location B. And in location A, people develop, say, agricultural lifestyles. And the people in location B are still hunter-gathering. And the people from location A, they go to location B, they add mix with the people from location B, and they also bring in their new lifestyle, such as their agriculture, the types of things, their, their agricultural practices and their farming techniques and whatever. And then we have cultural diffusion, which is basically where we have location A and location B. People in location A develop agriculture, whatever Neolithic practice, maybe it's cattle herding or whatever. And people in location B are still hunter gathering, but they don't add mix and they don't, and the people from location A don't move to location B. Rather you have this spread of ideas. So say lo people living in location B, somehow they learn it from the people in location A and then they start practicing it on. So the key determining factors that there's no genetic admixture. The same people just practicing different things because they learned from the other population that developed said practices. The movement of ideas, hunter-gatherers acquired technologies and technology from neighboring populations without genetic admixture. This is cultural diffusion. So again, the determining factors would be if the genetic composition of human remains from hunter-gatherers and farmers is similar, then the Neolithic transition happened through the movement of ideas rather than genes. On the other hand, if hunter-gatherers and early farmers are genetically different, then the spread of farming required the movement of people. Now, in the case of North Africa, I have another quote for you guys. Two main diffusion waves have been evidenced in the Mediterranean basin. A first one defined by the spread of a specific lithic industry characterized by pressure and indirect percussion, percussion reduction. A later one related to the spread of cardinal pottery and domesticated plants and animals. However, some evidence points to the Neolithic Revolution in North Africa as an in situ development, meaning that it developed there by itself independently from any other area. From Ibero Mauritian communities, for example, replacement of local hunter gatherer communities in the Maghreb and evidences certain continuity in burial practices through the Neolithic period. So basically what we can understand from that is that since there is somewhat of a continuity in certain burial practices, there's a continuity in the people, the hunter-gathering culture, such as the ibero Mauritian people and the later people of different time periods, which suggest more of a type of cultural diffusion rather than a demic diffusion of uh, peoples. But this changes as we will see in the later sections of this video when we talk about DNA of the different Neolithic sites in Morocco. Now it's important to know that in, in archaeology there are certain things that are associated with Neolithic Neolithic community such as pottery and AIDS. And AIDS is kind of like some sort of sharp blade like thing, almost like an axe a little bit. Now, both of these were found in two hunter gatherer contexts in Tunisia in 6000 BCE. So, what we can tell from this is that the Neolithic transition scenario had both cultural and demic diffusion. Now, this happened upon su successive waves of prehistoric and historic migrations. Since you're in the DNA section, I'm going to tell you about haplogroups. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what haplogroups are, I'll basically leave some definitions up on the screen, but also just to explain it in the most simplest bro science way I can. It's just a lineage, all right? So it's a, really, and when I say lineage, it's a lineage of like a particular gender. So you would have Y DNA, right? Which is paternal haplogroup. It's a, it's a paternal lineage. So it's your father's 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 father going back as passed from father to son. That's a paternal lineage. We call those Y DNA haplogroups. And then a the maternal lineage, is the same thing but mother to daughter the son gets them too so since guys have x and y chromosomes you get both the mom's lineage and the dad's lineage but the thing with the son is that you can't pass down the mother's lineage you only pass down the father's lineage but you get your mother's lineage girls they only get the mother's lineage but since they don't have a y chromosome they get only the mother's lineage and not the father's lineage i hope that makes sense now the haplogroup that's very common in north africa is the em81 
lineage and it follows a east to west clan where it's most frequent in countries north african countries like morocco but it's least frequent in north african countries to the east like egypt for example so this would separate maghreb populations from egyptian and libyan populations and also also have to mention that this em81 lineage is an indigenous haplogroup or at the very least that's what it's considered and then you have mitochondrial DNA, which I told you is passed down from mother to daughter. Sons get it too, but you don't pass it on. And the most common ones that are found are U6 and M1, and they're found in high frequencies in North Africa and have like Paleolithic origins, which I'll leave the time periods if you don't know what that is. What I have to tell you about this is that since these haplogroups are old, they've been in Africa, North Africa for a long time. This shows that this supports more of a cultural diffusion rather than endemic diffusion. Now there's another thing in here that kind of confuses me and it's a quote that says that presence in North Africa of mitochondrial haplogroups associated with the expansion of Eurasian support migration of farmers into the Middle East and North Africa. So I think they're talking about haplogroup, mitochondrial DNA haplogroups that are not U6 and M1 because they were already here. So there must be other haplogroups that came in with the, you know, spread demic diffusion model, whatever, of um, people from the Middle East coming into North Africa as well. Because you did have that. Now reading this quote, it says, a study from 2004 proposed that North Africa and paternal diversity was compatible with endemic diffusion with endemic expansion from the Middle East because the age of EM81 and other common lineages in North Africa, EM78 and J04, were relatively recent. They proposed that the North African pattern of Y chromosome variation was mostly of Neolithic origins. So basically what we can take from like the haplogroups is that the mitochondrial haplogroups kind of supports more of a cultural diffusion, especially when talking about like Northwestern Africa, the people who have mostly M haplogroups and U haplogroups. And then the Y DNA supports more demic diffusion because you have that east to west client or west to east client now i already know i'm gonna get a bunch of people who are going to not like what i'm saying inside of the comment section as it comes to me calling certain haplogroups such as the u6 and m1 maybe not m1 but the u6 especially as like non-african or sent calling them indigenous so in order for you guys to understand me and understand what exactly was happening in north africa we have to look at ancient dna from north africa that will tell us about how the neolithic transition happened and so like with DNA, one thing that um, this study that I was looking at kind of mentioned was that it's harder to get DNA from ancient North Africa or just from North Africa and Africa in general, because there's a lot of hotter climates. And so it makes like DNA extraction, the whole process, the science stuff, a lot harder to do. But nonetheless, we do have like ancient DNA samples. And so for the first time I'm going to be talking about is the site of Tafra, which shows a Eurasian origin of Paleolithic North Africa. Because basically these people had a lot of affinities with Eurasian populations. More likely, which they thought would be like out of Africa type of people. The site of Tafa was an Iberomerusian site. They had 14 individuals analyzed, nine of them. Seven out of nine produced enough DNA for them to run like actual analysis and get the results. Six of them were males and one of them were female, right? Now, now all of the males, Y DNA or paternal lineages were EM75. And then for the mitochondrial DNA is the one that they got. They got M1, U6, and apparently RO. And for their autosomal DNA, which is like their whole, their percentages, they were mostly a mixture of something related to the Natufians and then something which is more West African related. Now, reanalysis on this study has actually revealed that the admixture of Zodzuana like population contributed to the Natufians and um, West African type of thing, which I guess would probably be something what the ancestral north african would have been like i'm still not 100 percent sure on that but um people inside of my community of anthropology africa have told me that that's what it would have been like because ancestral north african would have been something related with something eurasian and west african sub-saharan related but what they say is that whatever this population was whatever eurasian like ancestry this population was that created i guess the paleolithic back migration into north africa would have contributed to the genome of the natufians now we have another site of the early neolithic period i don't know how to say the name so the abbreviation is just iam em whatever type of bullshit whatever thing and 
I'll just leave the name of it on the screen so you guys can see it. And so there's evidence of it belonging to an early Neolithic um, period, including the presence of grains, cardio pottery, and possibly domestic fauna. Now, direct radio copper dating does show that this site was dated back to around the 6th to 5th millennium BCE. And mitochondrial DNA analysis indicated that the early Neolithic samples of North Africa belong to some of the haplogroups groups observed in Tafrault, which were M1 and U6 again, which supports more of that cultural diffusion model that I was telling you guys about earlier. And um, this proves temporal continuity in North Africa from 13,000 to 5,000 years BCE. The first, so this kind of shows that the Neolithic transition, at least as far as this goes, is starting to happen with the movement of ideas rather than the movement of peoples. So there's nobody really migrating into Africa, at least at this time. And so what we can tell from this is that the first or the earliest stages of the Neolithic transition in North Africa started with the movement of ideas and again, not people. I'm making that very clear here. They did get one paternal haplogroup and that guy had EM35, a clay found in the Tafro. They found the EM35, but the specific clay that they found at this site was ancestral to the EM81 lineage. That's indigenous to North Africa and that you see a lot in modern day North Africa today. And that's the one that has the east to west climb. It's highest in Morocco and lowest inside of Egypt, Libya area. And what they say is that the observation of an ancestral clay to EM81, again, supports more of a sort of temporal continuity which shows that there are again more of a cultural diffusion for the earlier stages of the Neolithic period rather than endemic diffusion or a movement of people into North Africa with the ideas of um, you know the new lifestyles of the Neolithic period so you know with the pottery and the the domestication of animals and the agriculture and etc and then when compared like autosomal DNA these people kind of roughly shared the same ancestral components of the Iberian Russian people and what they actually say is that both of these sites from the 5th to 6th millennium BC and even the Tafra samples, which are like 16,000 years ago, both retain components of DNA that is still seen in the modern people of North Africa today. And so I guess what they call this is the ancestral Maghrebi component that still follows the east to west climb in North Africa. And what this kind of suggests is that there was some, this all suggested that there was some sort of in situ development of these things in North Africa as well. Now we have another North African Moroccan site, which is from the, it is from the late Neolithic period called Kel El. <laughs> I probably said it wrong, but I'll leave the name of it and maybe the location. So this site shows a range of occupation lasting from the Epipaleolithic all the way to the Late Bronze Age. And it's characterized by undecorated ceramic fragments, flint stones, and domestication of fauna. Now, from eight samples analyzed, only five produced enough um, complete mitochondrial DNA genomes. Now, what is different is that this site actually shows some evidence for demic diffusion, specifically from the Mediterranean type of area type of areas. So their mitochondrial haplogroups were K1, were K1, and their mitochondrial haplogroups were K1 and T and T2 and X. Now these haplogroups have been identified with European and ne and Middle Eastern Neolithic sites. Now what this shows is that there was some sort of migration. There was some sort of migration during 3000 BC and excludes any European DNA of being just a result of historical um, events such as Roman occupation or etc. They actually had some European related ancestry before that, which was most likely, I believe, the European Neolithic farmers, the early European Neolithic farmers. It also says DNA tests on indigenous people from the Canary Islands should showed that they also had Mediterranean lineages. Indigenous colonization of the island happened during around 10 and uh, during around 100 CE. And although it was previously thought that Mediterranean haplogroups came with the colonization by the Spanish crown in the 15th century, further DNA testing actually showed that there was a presence of these lineages, which showed again Mediterranean affinities, attesting to an ancient back migration, which was a lot older. Now I'm guessing these results that they found were on um, samples from the Canary islands before the colonization by the Spanish crown in the 15th century. Now haplogroup TM70 was observed and there's more haplogroup T in Egypt than in Morocco. This could be explained by a larger be explained by a larger Paleolithic persistence in the western region and a larger Neolithic impact on the eastern region of North Africa. Now when we look at the autosomal DNA of this it gets actually cool and what they say is that they basically find 
but the ancestral Maghrebi component, which they've seen in people like the Tafrod, for example. But then they also seen a Mediterranean or Anatolian, Anatolian Neolithic and European Neolithic farmer type of component inside of the people of this late Neolithic side of uh, Morocco. So what we actually know is that there was a population admixture during this time. And what's actually interesting is you can still see these two components in modern day North Africans as well. Specifically, like in Berber, your Berber Emissive populations. So, now that we are at the end, finally, what we can tell is that there was both demic and cultural diffusion within the Neolithic transition that North Africa had experienced. And what we know is that is that Upper Paleolithic populations and Early Neolithic populations share populations in North Africa share pretty much the same genetic makeup which is related to a back migration during the Paleolithic period from Eurasia into North Africa. And again, this back migration happened in Paleolithic times so over 15,000 years ago, around that time, maybe even before. And then people from the late Neolithic period had both this ancestral Maghrebi component, which was related to this back migration during the Paleolithic periods, but then also a European Neolithic component which was most likely tied with the migration of people from the Iberian Peninsula which is what probably like around Spain is uh, you can see this in their autosomal DNA but then also within their Ablo groups and so guys that is pretty much the DNA and sort of a little bit of what I was able to study off of this paper on the Neolithic transition in North Africa that happened. Um, let me guys, guys, let me know what you think. This is kind of, um, I'm, I'm kind of still getting, I'm still new to this. I'm still looking into this. And so any sort of um, crit critique is, you know, encouraged. But also I have a new community as well that I want you guys to know about. Um, and it's called Anthropology Africa. And it's basically where I have a bunch of other people in there. I have mentors who are basically helping teach about the origins of a bunch of African groups if you want to learn about your people you can just definitely go in there we have mentors there I learn from them I, and you know I still work on my knowledge we're gonna be working on cool projects working on videos for you guys and also my new blog anthropology Africa will be posting projects on there too so if you guys are looking for a place to like connect with other people and learn from people who actually know stuff which I'm currently doing as well people are they're always way smarter than me that's a place to go but yeah with that being said like if you enjoyed subscribe if you enjoyed and yeah stay ready for the next one be be uh be aware for the next one you know yeah